Are you on? No. Am I on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a different interface, so we weren't sure if it's working. If it's working and you're out there, let us know. Um, we'll, we'll, I'm going to give a few minutes before I actually get started to make sure we are actually live today. It says live. Okay. It says it's live, so we're going to go with it. Um, welcome, Karen, I'm Karen Margulis. Welcome to my studio. It's Sunday and it's a beautiful day here in Marietta, Georgia, but I decided I want to paint and I thought why not share with you today and I'm going to do a pastel painting demonstration for you today and um, I'm going to take you through the steps that I normally go through when I'm doing a painting, but the focus today will be on starting from a value thumbnail, for value thumbnail. So over on my Patreon page, and I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I have another page besides my blog in which I'm sharing video and sharing weekly challenges and we've got a community page and it's a lot of fun. And what we're focusing on for the month of January is value and the value of value. In other words, why do we need to know how to use it and how can we use it better? So one of our challenges has been do, to do a thumbnail a day for the month. And I was um, <clears throat> show, showing my, uh, my group over there a, a really fun way to do four value thumbnail sketches by using glassine paper or tracing paper. Um, so I wanna show you what I've done with this. <clears throat> This is the photo that I'm using for today's painting. It's a marsh scene. One, I've painted this several times. I love this scene. To me, it's like the perfect marsh. Um, and so my, my challenge, though, is to simplify it because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of grasses. There's a lot of different you know, things going on with the water, a lot of different um, layers. And so if I'm just going to paint from the photo, it's easy to get confused. So I want to simplify it. So one way to simplify is to squint. But a, a really fun way to do it is to take a piece of glassine paper, which actually acts like you're squinting, because it really kind of removes the color, it removes the, the detail, and allows you to just see the big, simple shapes. And so I outlined those shapes, and then I assigned each shape a value, depending on what they were. So the darkest areas are uprights, and then the flat grass is a middle value, the lightest value is the sky. And so what I've done is just simplified it into just four values. And I'm going to use this to start my painting. Now this actually only works if you're not going to change the shapes in your photo. Like so if I'm going to move things around, it, it, it's not going to work. But if you've got a photo that you like, and you like where the shapes are and, the, and where the elements are, but maybe it's just a little too busy and you can't really simplify it as well as you'd like to, the, the glassine or tracing paper trick really does a good job. So once I've done that, I'm going to put my photo uh, aside. I'm not going to look at my photo, but instead I'm going to look at the thumbnail to start the painting. One thing that I always do before I start any painting is to choose my pastels before I even get started. And I don't know if you can zoom in here, show my um, <clears throat> the colors that I chose. And the reason why I do this is I don't want to be overwhelmed by too many choices. I think a lot of times we collect so many pastels and then it just gets overwhelming. And that is just a really a good recipe for making mud when we're trying out colors on our, paint, on our painting. So I like to choose them in advance. And this is actually more than I probably will use. I usually keep to, say, 20, no more than 30 pastels. They've got to fit in this tray in one layer. And if I am not sure if they're going to work together, I'll do some color notes. Now, this is not really a painting, but it's using the same paper that I'm going to paint on, which, by the way, is UART 500 grit. That's what I'm using today. And I just say, okay, well, I'm going to make the trees this color, the sky this color, the grass is this color. How do I like it? Does it work? And if I feel like it's working in the little note, that's why I call this color notes, then I'm good to go and I'm ready to start. And so I'll often leave this out so I can refer back to it. And so then these are the pastels that I'm going to be using. Now, to start the painting, that's the next part. How do you start the painting? You're lo looking at a blank piece of paper. You've got an idea of what you want to do. 
but how do you begin? And there are lots of different ways you can start a painting, and I use a lot of different choices. It just depends on my mood, it depends on the subject. I might want a wet, drippy underpainting, I might want to be quick and do something dry. So there's lots of choices. So today I'm going to show you one of my go-to choices, one of the choices that I like to use a lot, and that is I'm going to block in the painting by putting down the extremes. And then I'll explain what that means in just a second. So I'm not going to look at my photo, but instead I'm going to look at my thumbnail. Now, this particular Mars scene, and the, today I'm going to make it about the, the uh, water and the grasses and not so much about the sky. So I have a, a, a horizon line that's up. I've raised it up a little bit higher. <clears throat> and then I've got some distant land here. And another distant land mass right here that comes forward. So I'm just basically sketching them in. And what I'm using is um, just a dark blue um, new pastel. I could use a pencil, I could use a, uh, a pastel pencil, whatever I have handy. Now, right now I'm trying to put in the water. I've got a glare on my on my glass scene so I can't really see it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably just gonna have to make it work here and when I draw the water in a um, any kind of river or creek or marsh what I like to do is draw the banks and not draw the shape of the water I'm gonna just draw the banks and I'm using angles and straight lines there's one trick or tip about painting marshes. If you want them to look like they're marshes and not rolling hills, you want to make sure wherever you have water is perfectly straight and level. Even if the bank looks like it curves, instead of drawing it as a curve, it's better if you stair step it with straight lines and angles. And Because water seeks its own level, it's not going to curve like that. So I'm going to make sure that I have straight lines and angles and that I'm going to have level water wherever the water meets the bank. And that's just one tip that makes it look more like a, a marsh. All right, so now that I have this in place, I'm going to do what I call blocking in the extremes. What does that mean? I'm going to put in the darkest darks, the lightest lights, and the most intense colors. And by doing that, it's going to give me a nice base or foundation for my painting. So I'm looking at my thumbnail, and I can see what the darkest areas are, and that are, are in this particular scene, it's the, the banks of the creek, so wherever there's a bank, and also the trees. Now, I'm going to take the liberty of darkening this foreground just a little bit so that I can kind of hold the water in place. Um, there we go. So that's the darkest dark. The next thing would be the lightest light, and that's going to be the sky. And I think I'm going to just use a very pale yellow, but you really don't, it doesn't really even show up, just to indicate some of the light areas in the sky. And then I'm going to put that same color down in the water because it's reflected in the water. The next thing I want to block in are my most intense colors. Now the most intense colors I think are the green of the grass. So I'm using a lime green and I'm going to put some of that lime green in there just to remind me that I want to put that color in there. Everything else then I need to assign it a color. So I'm going to say, well I need some dirt color. So here's grass. I'm going to put some orange underneath where the grass is going to go. And the reason why I'm doing this, I'm going to add it on top of the green, but the reason why I'm doing this is because this is a very, very green painting. There's a lot of green grasses. And if I were to make all of the grass just green, it would be very, very boring. I think it would be overwhelmingly green. So I'm putting the orange that'll go underneath the green. And, and I'll talk more about that as I develop the painting. And I'm going to use this turquoise blue to represent the distant landmass, so the landmass that's behind these trees. Um, and, and the reason why is I want some a color to kind of help push that back into the distance. So I'm using this cooler blue. Now, what I've done is I've started a lot darker and a lot bolder than I might want to end up. Because I know I can always tone it down. 
but it's really hard to get that punch back. So I'm starting a little bit bolder than I really want. All right, because look at the photo. It's kind of dull. So I gotta punch it up a little bit so that it has a little bit of life to it. So now I can put the thumbnail away and take my photo back out. Um, now I can start to look at the photo and I can start to refine this uh, painting a little bit more because now I can see more of the detail. I like blocking in the painting without looking at the detail because then I don't start to decorate too soon. By that I mean I don't start putting in grasses and, and, and um, all the little details until I have all the big uh, major players in, in place. So when I start a painting, no matter how I um, did the underpainting or the block in, I always start by um, reinforcing the darks. Um, and I think I'm going to take an additional step here before I do the darks. And I'm going to take my piece of pipe insulation foam that I like to use as a blending tool and just kind of blend in this very first layer. And I want to blend it in so that I have a kind of a um, more out of focus underpainting. And I want it to be out of focus so that I can determine where I want to put the focus. So by using this blending tool, I'm kind of softening everything. I'm also covering up the light bits in, on the paper, which can tend to be distracting. So, just blending it in now. You can already see how I have more of a softer, kind of dreamy, out of focus look to the painting. So this is, I, I can look now and say, okay, now I know where I want to put the focus. And where I want to put the focus is where I want your eye, the viewer's eye, to look. So i got to keep that in mind as I paint. So now I'm ready to reinforce the dark area. So wherever I have the dark, I'm going to go in and reinforce it with some other dark colors. Now, over on my Patreon page, we've been talking about um, how value does the work, but color gets the glory, and that we can layer colors that are the same value and have a much more interesting mix of color than if we just strictly go with the local color. So in, in this case, the local color is, all these trees are green, but I'm using other colors underneath the green so that I can make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm putting in some tree trunks now as I, as I start to develop this. And I'm using purple. This is a darkest value purple. I'm gonna use the same purple to put in the darks that are on the um, the banks or the edges of the grass right in here. There's a little bit of dark back in here. Now these darks that I'm putting way in the distance, they're gonna have to get modified. They're gonna have to get a little bit lighter because they're, they cannot be the same as the darks in the foreground or they won't look like they're in the distance. So that's one layer of dark, and I'm gonna, not going to use just one, I'm going to use maybe three. So I'm going to take another color, and I want to test and make sure it's the same value, so I make a little mark right on the painting. If when I look at it, I don't really notice it, in other words, it doesn't jump out, then I say, oh, okay, that's a close enough value, I can use it. What about this one? Hmm. That kind of shows up too much. I think it's too light. That's definitely jumping out. I can't use either of those right now. But I can use this rusty color. So I'm going to use it and use a very light touch and go over all my dark areas with this color. This is my second layer of dark. And this is how I'm trying to create a much more interesting mix of darks. So that's two. Let's go with another layer. Let's try blue. So I made a little mark. It's close enough in value so I can very lightly go over the dark areas with this blue. And wherever I've used dark, I'm going to add more dark. All right. And now I think it's safe to say that I can use green because I've built up enough layers. So I'm going to put in a dark green on top of all these colors. And 
my goal is to know when I look at this mass of trees uh, that some of the some of the rust color, some of the blue, some of the purple, some of the, the blue from the underpainting will peek through and it'll make a much more interesting mass of dark than if I just strictly went in right away with my dark green. All right, so I've established the darks. The next thing that I usually want to do is establish the lights, which would be the sky and the water. But before I do that, I want to um, work a little bit more on these distant um, trees and land masses, because then I'll know how far down I want to make my sky. Now, one thing about these, let's see, this is that's probably too blue for right there. You know, I made it turquoise. Uh, my intention wasn't to keep them turquoise, even though I love turquoise. It's too turquoise for that area. It's not far enough back for that. So this area of trees is behind these big trees, but there's another area of trees that's back even further, and those I can actually leave blue. I'm just going to use the same color, but in a soccer pastel. And Actually, it could be a little bit lighter, so I'm going to go over it with a, a kind of a lighter blue-gray. And they can actually, it's going to actually have to be a little bit shorter, which I'll fix. So, I've let the, the turquoise peek through this very kind of uh, neutral color, coolish green. Now I can do my sky, and I have to decide. It's kind of overcast in the photograph. Um, so I'm, I think I'll stick with kind of a, I don't want it to be a bright blue sky, in other words, like a really sunny day. So I want to kind of go with a slightly grayed down sky, kind of an overcast sky. And it kind of has an interesting band of purple. The one really nice thing about <clears throat> this particular photo is that the, the sky really doesn't have very much information in it, so it leaves me... Uh, a lot of freedom to kind of play around with it and make it my own. So I'm just taking the colors that I selected um, earlier that I intended to be for sky and I'm just kind of layering them and starting to come in and carve into my tree shape so that I can create some separation between them. So I'm making sky holes now into my big tree mass. So I start with a big solid mass and then I gradually kind of eat into it, carve it, carve it so that I can get a um, much more interesting shape. One of the things that I really liked about the, <clears throat> ooh, that was like fingers on a chalkboard. Hey Jenny. So Jenny wants to come see what's going on. Jenny has been cold. It's been cold in Georgia lately, but today it's warmed up some, so she's come out to see what's going on. So I'm using a pale yellow down here at the horizon to kind of give a little bit of a glow, and I also used it to carve in and cut down this landmass that was a little bit too um, fat, too thick. And it's also still a little too dark, so I'm taking a little bit of a pale blue and very lightly glazing over it so that I push it back even further. It needs to be a little bit shorter. And I think I have one a little bit lighter. And I'll add some interest to the sky. <clears throat> So I'm going to leave the sky like that, and now the next thing that I'm going to do is those same colors will be in the water. So that's why it's important that I um, work this way and have a tray of colors because then I can go back to the colors that I'm using and not have to, that they don't get lost in my set of pastels. So now what I want to do before I address the waters, I want to address the grass a little bit and create, start to create some reflections. So before I work on the grass, I want to um, put in some dirt. What does that mean when I say put in some dirt? Well, for me, what it means is I don't want to just make my grass green, right? That would be boring. So if it's green, if it's growing, I like to remind myself, if it's green, that's what I say. If it's green, if it's growing, 
then there's going to be some dirt underneath. And so what is dirt? Dirt is nothing but some color that will um, be much more interesting than just pure green. So what am I using? I'm using some oranges and some peaches and I'm putting them down not in any really particular order so there's no not necessarily any rhyme or reason Ooh. just some of these warm dirt colors I like to call them and I'm putting them down in where the grass is going to go and actually technically if this were a um, a marsh scene that was like fall I could just add some kind of golden grasses to it but this is going to be green so we're going to I'm going to go with the green but you can see what I'm doing by establishing the dirt I'm creating some interest underneath the, the green that's going to be coming I don't know if you noticed but in the distance what I did with my marks was I created um, horizontal marks <coughs> horizontal bands and then as I came forward I started to have those bands kind of shift and, and become more upright, like the way the grasses are growing. I'm adding gold in here now. Now Heidi's demanding some attention. All right. There's some little mounds of grass back in here that I actually like. I'm going to stick those in before I go any further just to break that shape up a little bit. All right, now I'm ready for uh, the grasses. I think what I'm gonna do though is go ahead and put in some water. So before I put in the water, I'm gonna take my pinky finger. This is one of the few times that I'll actually blend with my finger. I'm in the way. <coughs> I'm in the way of myself. I'm gonna pull the grasses down into the water. And you can see that they very subtly create this illusion of reflections. Now I've noticed that I've done something that I'm going to have to correct. And I have this bank almost equal to this bank. And that's not very interesting. So I'm going to have to move one down. So I think what I'll do is I'll move this one down. So I'm going to kind of reestablish some more of the darks. And then when I come in with the water, I'm going to cut the water in a little bit more. So I, I don't want things to be too equal. All right, we'll see if that works better. So now I'm going to take the colors that I have in the sky and put them in the water. And I, one thing about painting the water, I'm going to use level horizontal marks. Level horizontal marks. And it starts to get a little bit, it's going to reflect the colors that are up in the sky. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker as I come to the foreground. So that's like purple water. Let's add a little, little bit of blue to it. <clears throat> there we go. Now I'm going to just kind of let it drift kind of into the grasses and then I'm going to pull some grasses over it. So by establishing the water right now, then I can, it's going to be easier for me to come and pull some of the grasses right on top. And there's probably a little bit of light down in this section as well. And then one thing you can do to, to kind of make it feel like, well that's water and that's grass, is to create some very subtle um, current lines. So I'm taking that pale yellow and just kind of coming in and making a few, uh, just a few marks to indicate where there's a break in the water and the grasses. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> work on my green. I'm going to, let's, let's work on the tree just a little bit. The light is coming from over on the left, so that means I can add a little bit of, um, kind of cool green to the right side of the trees where it's not getting as much light. And notice that I kept my tree shapes 
nice and big and solid. And now I'm coming and I'm starting to break them up a little bit. So by keeping them solid and not trying to overanalyze where I see all the light and dark, hopefully they will look like stronger trees, masses, and, not, and they'll have <coughs> form and they won't look like they are um, flat. If they're too spotty looking, then they can end up looking flat. And that's what I want to avoid. Tell me where you're going to answer that question. <clears throat> Um, if, you're, if, you've, if you've got questions about what I'm doing, go ahead and ask them in the, in the comments. And then when I um, get to them a little bit later, I'll be glad to answer your questions. Um, and also, I'll, I usually post this whole video. If you've missed any of it, I'll post it on my YouTube channel. And I usually blog about it, too, so that way you can read more about what I've, my thought process is on the blog because sometimes it's really hard when I'm trying to paint and think about the painting and then um, try to explain what I'm doing a lot of times afterwards I think of oh man I should have said this or it would have been really good if I said this so bear with me because I always like to go back and kind of um, reinforce some of the things that I think are important now I'm coming in and putting in these dark tree trunks and then I'm going to come in with the grasses. All right, now to do the grasses. In the distance, the grasses are going to be lighter and cooler or duller. So I'm going to go right over that dirt. So remember I put in the dirt color. Now I'm, now I'm going to modify it with some lighter, cooler, duller greens. And I want some of those the uh, orange dirt to show up, to peek through. And remember, when I started the painting, I had, oh, look at what happened. They lined themselves back up again. That's one thing about, um, it's interesting thing happens. We like things to be, um, unequal it's more interesting but our brain likes to organize things and if we're not paying attention the, our brain will jump right in and say oh, let me fix that you need to be better organized with that and then they they ruin it or it ruins gets ruined we can fix it so I'm going to add some brighter greens to this foreground area now these are grasses but I'm not painting single blades of grass at this point. Um, right now what I'm doing is I'm establishing the larger masses of green. And then I'll come in when I'm doing the finishing touches to put in some single blades. And the, the idea being, the, sorry, I get into the painting and I, I'm blocking the view. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I don't want to paint individual blades of grass too soon. So what I'm trying to do is establish big, fat, wide areas of grass, and then I'll come in and put a few pieces of grass in. And now I'm to the point where I'm going to take the uh, workable fixative. I use this Blair Low Odor workable fixative. And uh, this is the only time I use fixative. I don't use fixative uh, to finish a painting, but I do use fixative to darken an area that I want to go over and create more texture. So the, I like <clears throat> what the fixative does because it allows me to come back with it um, with more grass color that will start to actually create a, kind of what I would call an illusion of texture. It's not real texture, but maybe a, 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 it'll, it'll start to look more textured. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm not sure I'm enjoying all the greens that I have here, but I'm going to make these work. I think sometimes 
it's real easy to get frustrated and carried away and say, oh, I don't have the right green. I don't have the right color. And then, you know, you would think it's just that one magic color is going to make the difference. But a lot of times, you actually have what you need and you can make it work. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with that idea. Now you can see in this area where I pull it down, you can see what I mean by creating more texture to it. Another really fun thing to do is um, to get some clear gesso and to use some clear gesso, let it dry, and then paint on top of that, and you get this really wonderful texture. Um, I'm just, I kind of lost the darks in there when I went to change it, so I'm going to put them back in. And now I'm to the point now where um, I really need to slow down. So like the idea with when I paint, I um, typically tend to paint fairly quickly, but that's because I've done a lot of the work. I've created the thumbnail already. I have picked the colors that I want to use. Uh, I've already come up with my concept. So I can paint pretty quickly. But when it comes to the finishing, that's when I have to slow down. And I have to really think about where do I want the eye to move in the painting? Uh, where do I need to put some finishing marks in the painting? Goodness, Heidi. Heidi really is vocal, vocal today. Yeah, that's a good word for her. Um, and so let me just do that really quickly for you. And then what I'll do is I'll more than likely um, stop the camera and then I'll finish the details on my own and then I'll post the results. But what I'm looking for is where does my eye go? When I come in with fresh eyes, where do I go? And is it where I want my eye to go? So, you know, ultimately I would like you to come in the painting, kind of go up the river, kind of go down, enjoy these trees, but then still want to go explore what's back behind there and then kind of exit out through the sky. So I've got a pathway. So I've got to somehow refine this tree area so that your eye really has something to focus on there. And then I've got to draw your eye back to this area and then I've already created kind of a pathway through the sky by the marks I made in the sky. So I've got a really kind of Z kind of composition going, but I have to make a few marks to help solidify that and to help direct your eye to say, hey, this is where I want you to go. and This is how I want you to enjoy this painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and then kind of go back with fresh eyes and add those details. And if you want to see the details, check out on my blog later today, KarenMargulis.com. And of course, I invite you to the Patreon page too and um, join us over there. We're having a lot of fun. So thanks for tuning in to this edition of Sunday Studio.